Okay, let's move on to our next speaker, and that's uh, Claudio Oriani, and uh, he'll tell us about automating a telescope with a remote desktop and Nina. Take it away, Claudio. Thank you, Paul, for having me tonight. Uh, and Happy New Year, everyone, from Richmond Hill. Uh, by the way, I'm walking this uh, to the David Dollop Observatory. Tonight, I want to talk about how I automated my astro imaging sessions with a dedicated uh, computer, remote desktop, and Nina. I will talk about my requirements and limitations and the solution that works for me. Then I will run a demo to show you what you can achieve with Nina, which is my preferred astrophotography software, its advanced sequencer, and a few plugins. Finally, I will share some images um, I capture during my remote sessions and will answer your questions. But let's start. Uh, it's pretty cold outside, so we know that the average low temperature in January in Toronto is minus seven, while in February is uh, minus six. So I don't want to be out in the cold while my telescope is imaging. I also want to plan my imaging sessions well in advance. This way I can optimize the precious imaging time when I find some rare clear nights, you know, in Toronto. I also want a software that can help me log in my observation, for example, by automatically saving the target name, um, the camera filter, telescope, exposure time, and so on. I also want to receive real-time notifications. So I want to be notified uh, on the progress of my imaging sessions and uh, be notified if something goes wrong. I also want to see and share my images in real time uh, for outreach purposes or science data. And last but not least, I'm lazy. I don't want to learn a new program uh, since uh, I find that uh, Nina uh, is working very well with my one-shot camera or astrophotography tool if I'm using my DSLR camera. Also have auto stackers, sharp cap, uh, ready stacks for planetary imaging. So the short list, uh, let me do decide one of the three options I had, the ACII Plus, Stellar Mate Plus, or a mini PC and a Wi-Fi extender. ACR Plus, uh, its cost uh, probably is uh, around $400 or so here. And it's amazing. It's dedicated smart Wi-Fi controller for your telescope, imaging rigs, and mount filters, everything. Uh, there are some but. So the previous version were also known to have problems with the Wi-Fi uh, in terms of antenna reception and so on. Also, there are some missing features, uh, so like a more flexible for alignment, filter management, sequencer. But above all, if you want to use a different camera other than a JWO, you can't. So one reason to exclude the DACI Air Plus was that I'm using a, a, a focuser that is a cellist and also in terms of the mount. Another option was the Stellar Mate, also a very good option. It's based on the library name in the lib and it runs on Windows, Mac, OS, Linux. Uh, the Pro version, you also have uh, some additional features like a polar alignment assistant, like video, cloud storage, and so on. But you have to pay a subscription that is uh, around $4.99 per month. And then my preferred solution, I will explain you why in a few seconds, is a mini PC and a Wi-Fi extender. As I said before, um, I have an old Celestron CG5 mount. There are some compatibility issues with the Stellar Mate. I think that right now they have been sold. In the past, I used to freeze windy libraries. And uh, in terms of uh, ACR Plus, as I say, I don't want to be locked on the JWO cameras. So this is my solution. A mini PC with Windows 10 Pro and remote desktop. In my case, uh, last year I purchased a B-Link Gemini T34. A Wi-Fi extender is a high gain antenna that is uh, running both of uh, 2.45 gigahertz. An astrophotography imaging suit I already know is Nina, this is free, 
and the notification system in place uh, name is uh, IFTTT. The name means uh, if this, then that. I will uh, tell you more in a few seconds. And I also want to share my astro images while they are taken. So this is happening real time with the Nina plugin name, Lightbucket. This is my mini PC. Um, as I said before, it's uh, very versatile. And uh, the thing I really love about this PC that is very, very lightweight. So it's less than one kilogram. I added this uh, high gain USB Wi Fi adapter. And I paid like $25 on Amazon. And this is uh, what my gear looks like. So the billing is uh, connected to the accessory tray through a Velcro strap. And I'm using my CG5 mount with um, apochromatic refractor. This is my sweet spot. In terms of drivers, um, there is ASCOM platform, of course, to uh, guide the mount, the focuser, and everything else. The camera drivers, the mount, focuser, filter, wheel controls, if you have any, and the polar scope drivers, if any. QHI Pole Master in my case. Uh, a note about the Nina and the DSLR camera. Uh, the documentation indicates that Nina supports Canon and, and Nikon DSLR, but I would suggest uh, to try your camera before because maybe your model is not completely uh, working with the Nina. Then the mini PC software I installed on my, on my computer. So Stellarium uh, and it's very useful because uh, it can communicate with Nina and basically you can pass uh, the AR and the declination of solar system minor bodies. Let's say, for example, the comet Leonard. I took some pictures a few weeks ago, asteroid and so on. Of course, Nina. And for plate solving, you also want to use uh, um, in my case, ASAP and ASAP database. You can download the stars until uh, magnitude 17 or 18, depends. 18, of course, is uh, uh, more powerful, but you also require more space on your hard drive. File capture for planetary imaging, if you're doing any. Sharp up a PhD2 for auto guiding. Uh, a few notes in terms of the configuration. So, first, you want to Disable Windows Update. Uh, you want you don't want Windows Update to run outside the working hours. So typically, you're using your uh, mini PC nighttime, and also Wi-Fi always on. So not power saving option because you don't want to lose the network connectivity while you're imaging. Uh, another thing I found that in my experience, a six gigabyte RAM are more than enough to guide plates of the imaging in Nina. Maybe for the light view or planetary imaging, you would like to require more uh, gigabytes of RAM, let's say eight. And uh, in terms of Nina, so first of all, uh, if you want to use the advanced sequencer, you want to download the beta version of Nina. And the three particularly useful plugins I'm using, three-point polar alignment. You will see that really is a game changer for me. Works almost anywhere in the sky. You don't need it to have a view the polar, uh, the Polaris. So by the way, I'm no longer using the Pole Master because I found that the three-point polar alignment is very accurate. Ground station, it sends failure events and free form messages to a variety of messaging automation services. In my case, I decided to use uh, um, if this, then that webhooks. I will show you in a few minutes. And Focus Focus is uh, improving the, the autofocus procedure for Nina. And another beautiful plugin, I found that this very, very interesting is Lightbucket. So what happened with like bucket? You're just uh, um, sending information about your session while you're imaging. 
So you can just save the target name, the rotation of your telescope, telescope name from your file, the camera name, image filter, duration of uh, your sequence, beaming, and also total RMS in arc second. And uh, above all, a small 300 pixel thumbnail of your stretched frame. I will show you in a while. There are other uh, interesting plugins. I don't want to talk too much about them tonight. But for example, there is Pix Inside tools uh, for those who are using Pix Inside. Uh, typically, you already have a master dark, a master base, and a flat frame. So what this plugin is doing uh, is just stacking and calibrating images on the fly while you are taking uh, images. Of course, you need uh, enough processing power to interact with Pix Inside in parallel to imaging. And another plugin I never use uh, uh, so far, but I'd like to have a try is the Exoplanet plugin. So basically it retrieves a list of exoplanets. You can just uh, plan in your imaging session and you can just take picture before, during and after the transit to create the light curve. But now let's go to the demo time. I will try not to talk too much over the video but at the end of the demo, I will take questions for sure. adding all of my uh, camera telescope. In my case, I'm using a Aspen simulator driver, and this also to trigger an error during my presentation. I can use uh, the guiders of PhD2, and I can also tell Nina through PhD2 to, to tether every number of frames. This is something I particularly like. You can even connect Nina to a weather station. So you can basically be notified the rain is coming. If you have a dome, I don't. You can tell Nina to close the dome before the rain is coming. Then you want to plan your imaging session. Let's say Orion Nebula. The rectangle is telling you what is the field of your, your camera. If you're not happy with the setting, you can also recenter the image, just moving the rectangle and click recenter the image, or even create a mosaic, let's say three row for three columns. And when you're happy, you add your image to your advanced sequencer. In this case, I just want to open an advanced sequence already saved in the past. I will edit the sequence to meet my needs, logic sequence, I will assess the result. Let's see. I click the open button, the load. Taking a while to load on this computer. And you have the global trigger that is just uh, checking for errors. Then the sequence startup plus the capture target, the main imaging sequence. There are instructions you can add or remove very easily with the drag and drop. I will show you. For example, I want to wait for time. The ideal solution is to wait until your target, let's say M42, is high in the sky, let's say 30 degrees. And you just add instructions, drag and drop, and remove distraction by clicking the bin button. And when you're happy, you just press the play button. Before doing that, I want to go back to the plugins I installed.
So if you click to the plugin button, to the left here, these are the plugins that are installed on my mini PC. Checkman are telling you that these are the plugins I installed. So Ground Station to send notification. There are different services available. I decide to use if is then that. Focus focus for the autofocus routine. Light bucket. I will show you in a while what is going to happen with light bucket. And this is really my favorite one. I have less than one arc minute uh, pole alignment error in 10 minutes. Now, let's start. It's executing the instructions. So this is what I'm expecting. One exposure of five seconds of the Orion Nebula, two email notifications for the imaging session start and ended, email notifications for error, if any. And we do have one error. This is the first email I got. This is the second email I got. And finally, this is uh, the image session completed. Plus an error, as I said before, because my simulated camera doesn't have any cooler. Let's switch to light bucket. What happened? behind the scenes is that my images were uploaded on this server with all the information related to my telescope and this real image I took uh, in November. So this is my simulation. And you can see the filter sequence, number of exposures, and so on. If you click, you can go and see the details. But now let's go back to see some images I captured on the night of November 24. A few minutes exposure, multiple exposure. So the horse head and flame nebula the Orion Nebula. The Monkey Head Nebula and Pleiades. All from my couch. This was just amazing. And I don't know if you have uh, any questions, uh, but that's all for me. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Claudio. That's a great presentation. Thank you for bringing all those uh, applications to our attention. I had never heard of Nina. Uh, looks like it's a full featured uh, package. I will definitely give it a try. Um, Absolutely, we... it's uh, for it is for free. Exactly. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, Emma, do we have any questions for uh, Claudio? Um, we do. We do have a couple of questions. First of all. Have you tried to absorb the James Webb with a telescope? Uh, no, I had no that chance. Uh, and above all, because it was uh, very cloudy. It was uh, going uh, through the Orion uh, constellation a few days ago, but we had all the clouds. So no chance for me. Oh, that's too bad, but maybe soon. Um, Second question, with this system, is there a way to allow remote control of your telescope? Like, uh, for example, having a friend in another country have access? Uh, yes, it is possible. Uh, you have to create a VPN. 
Uh, I don't want to go too much in detail, but there are some tutorials available. You can, uh, by the way, also put the telescope somewhere else and you can use a uh, um, mini rotor to control your telescope. Let's say you have uh, a dark uh, place when you can leave your telescope, let's say in uh, Northern Ontario, and you can just open the dome from your house here. So yes, it's possible. Cool. Thank you so much. That's all the questions. Thank you very much. And back to you, Paul. Great. Thanks, Claudia.